Good morning and welcome to our Christmas family service. And I am speaking to you from Alabama in America. So um, this is where we've been uh, for a while because coming here from a special trip to Nicaragua and been out there with a mission team uh, doing medical, um, uh, medical work with the doctors they were with, giving out lots of medicines to the people. And then also there was a dentist. And while they were doing that, I was with the children. And uh, later on, when we come back in the new year, I'll show you the pictures of uh, the trip to Nicaragua, which was wonderful. And the children uh, enjoying hearing God's word and doing different crafts as well and singing. So I'll show you that in the new year. But today, of course, we are celebrating Christmas. And uh, I'm going to show you the Christmas story and also a special Christmas story as from Wales yesterday. They also had a special Christmas program. And so I'm going to show you some of that as well. So I hope you can stay with us. And of course, uh, when I went to Nicaragua and of course here in Edinburgh, Sorry, I'm not in Edinburgh. What you are seeing at my background is a picture of Edinburgh and how it is in the Christmas season with the different festivities. So, but as I said, I'm here in America, in Alabama. And with me, of course, is my faithful friend, is Mickey. So say, hey, everybody, happy Christmas. Hope you're going to have a great, great time. I love Christmas. Yes, Mickey loves Christmas. And he's going to have a good time here. He's making lots of new friends again. Yes, it's wonderful. I hope you're my friend. Yep, he's got lots of friends as he goes to different places. They say, Mickey, we remember you. Sometimes they forget me, but well, that's fine. But they remember Mickey. Yes, that's good because they remember. I tell them the special promise from God's word. Yes, if you looked in before... You may know the special promise from God's word that Mickey tells you. And if you've forgotten that, what I'm going to do, we're going to have some car one or two carols we'll look in. But I'm going to start with Mickey's favorite song and including the promise. So we'll just do that as we start. But before we do anything else, let's have a prayer together. Lord Jesus, thank you that we can share today of the wonderful message, Lord, that the angels proclaim to the shepherds, that people were wanting and longing to happen for hundreds of years, the fact that you were to come to earth. And we thank you for the way that you came as a child, as a baby in manger, and Lord, how you came and fulfilled the wonderful promises that were made many, many years ago, and how you came to love us, to save us, and that you're alive now after you took our punishment on the cross, and now you're alive. And Jesus, you have made that promise, you'll never leave us. So we worship you, and we thank you for this special time when we celebrate your coming onto this earth, and to be amongst us as one of us. So thank you, Lord Jesus. And pray and bless this time. And anyone who's looking at this program today, may they know your presence and your promise. And the greatest gift of all, which is the gift of your forgiveness, that your love and your life. Lord, that's a tremendous gift. May everyone who's looking in today know you as their Lord and Saviour. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, amen. Well, instead of, as we say, we'll do a, a couple of carols uh, in a few minutes. But I thought we'd start with Mickey's song. And, of course, this is one of the songs that we've done through this year. And, of course, hopefully, if we we'll get back next week, I'm not quite sure if I'll have the opportunity. Uh we will do a bit of a review from the things that have happened in the year. So let's hopefully now um, that we can go and here we go. I'm sharing my screen and hopefully come on with Mickey's 
song. And in a moment we'll get it, but it seems to have disappeared. Ah, here it is. Jesus says, I will never leave you. Right, there it is. First to sing, listen every day, sing it always, come what may. This verse will keep you going, this verse will keep you free, this verse will always give you life and victory. I will never leave you, Jesus says to you, I will never leave you, and my word is true. I will never leave you, I will hold your hand. I will never leave you and cause you to stand. From the beginning, God told his saints, Abraham and Moses, when they had complaints, Joseph and Gideon, many others too, heard these words of comfort, I am with you. I will never leave you, Jesus says to you, I will never leave you, and my word is true, I will never leave you, I will hold your hand, I will never leave you and cause you to stand. Because he was with them, they had victory, enemies around them, they all had to flee. The Lord went before them, and behind them too. Victory was theirs, though they were so few. I will never leave you, Jesus says to you. I will never leave you, and my word is true. I will never leave you, I will hold your hand. I will never leave you, and cause you to stand. Listen now to Jesus as he speaks his word. This glorious promise he has declared as he rose to heaven, hidden from you. His final word speaking, I am with you. I will never leave you, Jesus says to you. I will never leave you, and my word is true. I will never leave you, I will hold your hand. I will never leave you. Just before that leaves, and um, I have to, that's right, stop. There's just some of the other videos we've done. Now let's stop. There we go, and we're back. Um, Did you enjoy that, Mickey? Hang on, let's see. Is yes, I love singing that song because that's my promise, and I want to give you this special promise here at Christmas. That Jesus says, I will never leave you. I always do it. If you put your hand up, then you can remember. Jesus says, I will never leave you. Okay, Mickey, that's good. It's always good to remind us of God's word. And of course, at Christmas time, we're reminding ourselves of the pressure, uh, the wonderful event that happened. And we're going to tell you that story in a few minutes. But we're going to look now just at yesterday's story that Pastor Pauline and George, who are dressed up for Christmas, uh, told their program. And I thought it's so good, a special Christmas message. We'll have a quick look at that. Would you like to do that? I think hopefully this will work. So, okay, yeah, Mickey, I know you want to see it. So let's have a quick look 
And let's go into our screen again. And here we have a story. There we go. Let me put that down back. The technicalities. That was uh, There we go. It starts with Brother George, who is singing a Christmas carol. expect you've got one in your house and this is a very pretty one and it's a story of 
three different trees, a small one, a middle-sized one, and a big one. And these three trees were in the forest together. Number one was small, number two was medium, and number three was very big. And they were all discussing what they wanted to do, what they wanted to be made, because they knew that one day the woodcutter would come and cut them down. And so the little tree, he said this, he says, I'm only a little tree, but I would love it if, a, if the woodcutter came and they made me into a throne so that a king could sit on me. That's what I would like. Tree number two, the medium, says, no, 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 no. He said, no, I want to travel. I want to go to lots of different places. I hope when the woodcutter cuts me down, I'll be able to go to lots of different countries. Then the big tree says, I want to be the most famous tree in the whole world. I want everybody to remember me. I never want them to forget. That's what I want. And so the three trees were stood in the forest. And one day they heard a noise. Something was coming. It's coming. Oh no, what's that noise? Oh no. They looked at each other and said, no, the woodcutter's coming. And the little tree said, oh no. And they began to chop, chop, chop the little tree. And because it was only little, it didn't take long. And boom. Down he went. And he was put into the carpenter's yard. Medium-sized tree and big tree said, Wow, little tree's gone now. I wonder what's going to happen. And then one day, they heard the noise again. Here it comes. Oh no, the woodcutter's coming. It's coming. Oh no, oh no, no, no. And the medium-sized tree, they began to get the electric saw out. It took much longer, but eventually, medium-sized tree went down as well. And all, oh, and all that was left in the forest was the big tree. He thought, well, those two have gone. I am the only one left. And he stood there for a long time. But then one day, he heard the noise again. Oh no, oh no, oh no, they're coming again to get. And the woodcutter came back and the big tree stood still, knowing it was his turn next. And they got the big saw out and began to cut him. Oh, oh. Because it was so big, it took a long time, but eventually, and down he went and his wood was taken to a woodcutter's yard now what happened to the dreams the little tree had wanted to be a throne the medium one wanted to travel and the third one wanted to be famous let me tell you what happened to the little tree the little tree was put in a carpenter's shed in a village and one day a farmer came and said I need some wood I've got lots of cows in my stable and I need some wood to make a, a, a manger for them to have some food and so the carpenter came and began to cut the tree and then to bang some nails into it and the little tree became a place to put the food for the cows. And the farmer said, thank you very much. And he took that away and put it in his shed, ready for the cows. But you know what happened? One night, 
A man and a lady came to their farmer's house and said, Please, sir, we have nowhere to sleep tonight. Can we stay outside where the cows are and the sheep? Yes, said the farmer. And during the night, the lady had a baby and she put the baby into the food trough where the cows used to eat their food. It was called a manger. And do you know who that baby was? It was Jesus. And Little Tree's dream came true because a king, Jesus was the king of heaven and he, he was put in the manger and so Little Tree's dream was fulfilled. Now what about medium-sized tree? He wanted to travel. Well, one day, somebody came to the wood yard and said, I want some wood, I want to make a boat because I'm going sailing. And so they took medium-sized tree and sawed it up and banged it. They banged it into place. medium-sized tree became a boat and it was sailing on the lake and you know what one day there was a great big storm thunder and lightning oh it's very scary medium-sized tree thought oh no this is the end but there was a man in the boat and he said be quiet when? Stop it! And suddenly, it was peaceful and calm. A medium-sized tree thought, who is that? You know, it was Jesus. And Jesus went far in that boat with the medium-sized tree. So medium-sized tree's dream was fulfilled. But what about big tree? He wanted to be the most famous tree in all the world. And for a long time, he was put in the shed and nobody cared about him. But one day, some soldiers came. They said, we need some wood, quickly, get some wood. They were very angry and very fierce. And they carried Big Tree away. Two big pieces of wood from Big Tree. And they, they put the wood on the back of a man and said, carry it up the hill. And so they carried Big Tree up the hill. And when they got to the top of the hill, he dropped the wood and the soldiers put the trees, two big planks together. They began to nail And they made the shape of a cross with the tree. And then they got the man and they nailed the man's hand on the tree. And then they stuck it in the ground at the top of the hill. Who was the man? It was Jesus. And the soldiers nailed him to the cross and he stayed on the cross all day. There was a big storm. It became very dark. There was thunder. There was lightning and big trees thinking, oh, what's going on? What's going on? Yes, he could hear all these noises. And the man who was nailed on the tree, he died. And big tree thought, well, that's very sad. But you know, they took the man off the tree. But you know what? Who that man was? It was Jesus. And three days later, he came alive again. And everybody remembered the cross. Everybody remembered Big Tree. And Big Tree became the most famous tree in the whole world so that everybody heard about him because everyone has heard about the cross of Jesus. And so the dreams that Big Tree, Middle Tree, and Little Tree were all fulfilled. Little Tree became the place where baby Jesus laid when he was a baby. 
middle tree became the ship and he went far with Jesus and big tree became the cross on which Jesus died. And so God remembered their dreams and God remembers your dreams and he makes them come true as he did for the trees in the forest. And although they were very sad to be cut down, they fulfilled a fantastic purpose that so will you. And so we, that's what we're remembering this Christmas. And when you look at your tree, think that it's only made of wood. And with that wood, God could make many things. And with your life, he can make many things. And we want all the boys and girls and people in the whole world to know that, that God can make anything out of their life if they have a dream. Shall we pray? And when we pray together, we're going to pray for all the boys and girls in all the countries of the world to hear about Jesus who was put in a manger, a wooden manger when he was a baby. He sailed on a ship and he was put on a wooden cross. And all that wood came from three trees in the forest. We pray, Father in heaven, thank you that when Jesus came, you used the resources in this world. We thank you. you. You fulfilled the dreams of big, medium, and little trees. And, Lord, you will fulfill our dreams too. We thank you, Lord. They were used. They were used to carry Jesus. They were used to help him. And, Lord, I pray that every boy and girl, every mum and dad watching, everyone watching, will let you use their life to help Jesus spread the good news that he's come this Christmas. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. We pray for the boys and girls in countries all over the world today, that they'll all hear about Jesus coming and dying in a manger, traveling on the seas and dying on the cross. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. And I'm going to ask Timmy Bear now to come and wish you happy Christmas and um, to say hello to you. Thank you, Timmy Bear. Thank you for all your wonderful noises of the woodcutter. Thank you. I'm just going to stop that video from. Don't eat too much and remember to thank your mum and dad and others for their presence. But most of all, thank God for his gift, Jesus. And when you look at your tree, don't forget about the three, three trees in the forest who had big dreams. And God fulfilled those dreams. Right, I'll just pause that there and uh, I'll just come out and we'll perhaps go back to that later on, that wonderful programme that Pauline did and he was singing lots of carols there too. And those of you, well, that song we just sang about uh, I Will Never Leave You, Timothy, um, who was, of course, the pianist there and making those wonderful noises for the story that Pastor Pauline was sharing. He was the one who arranged that song of biggest song i will never leave you so he's a very very gifted uh, musician and he's using his gifts to help people come to know the lord jesus and that's um, something that god has given everybody whether we're young or whether we're old god has given us gifts and it's using and doing what we can to fulfill what Jesus told us to do, which is to go into all the world and tell everybody about him. So let's find, we can do our own Christmas carol here. And hopefully I can just get it up. Let's do uh, this one. And hopefully we should be able to see it, uh, which is, oh, come all you faithful. So let's just do this one together. And I've got... Um, Nikki here, just to help us, which would be really good. Okay, so hopefully um, we can just do that now. 
O oh, come, all you faithful, joyful and triumphant. O oh, come ye, O oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, for the King of angels. O oh, come, let us adore. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Okay, that's the, the, the chorus of the famous carol, Oh, Come, All Ye Faithful. Now, we'll hopefully get another carol later on, but I want to... Now share something with you of the, what we call the Christmas story. So I'm just hopefully need to get back into the screen and I'm just bringing up, hopefully it's there. I have these pictures from the special pictures which we all got of the wonderful message of Christmas now. Here we go. And we'll get to the very beginning with it. There we go. And there we go. Well, I thought just as we start, I'll just give reminders of where I live. And that is Edinburgh. And I'm not there today. As I said, I'm here in the place called Antianta in Alabama. And it's a beautiful place, but it is six hours different. So uh, you'll be looking at that time around about half past eight. I think it is now. And here it's about half past two in the morning. So, but anyway, here's some beautiful pictures of Edinburgh. Edinburgh's, uh, well, they've been quite cold. And they've had some snow in Edinburgh, uh, I believe, and in parts of Scotland anyway. But uh, this is one or two famous pictures of Scotland. There's the, what we call this, the Howland cow, uh, special cows that are here, very rugged in the mountains. And here's one or two other pictures. That's from the castle. This is Edinburgh Castle. And often we do uh, ceremonies with flags. And as I was doing this preparation, I thought, well, here's a, a song, isn't it? about a flag and sometimes it's great to have a flag if you have it and to wave a flag to celebrate what Jesus has done many people do that in churches and um, they're just celebrating what Jesus has done so here's a, a song that goes love is a flag flying high from the castle of my heart from the castle of my heart from the castle of my heart, love is a flag flying high. From the castle of my heart, for the king is in residence there. Then go, so let it fly in the sky, let the whole world know, let the whole world know, let the whole world know. So let it fly in the sky, let the whole world know that the king is in residence there. Okay. So I just want to move on from that as we go into the Christmas story. And uh, just before we do that, this is the flag of Scotland that people wave uh, as a country flag. The St. Andrew's flag is the symbol of Scottish or Scotland as a country. Now, here we have this was one of the beautiful nativity scenes that was displayed. I think this was last year in Edinburgh. So i uh, show you that. But then let's go to the beginning of the Christmas story of the good news of Christmas. And it is good news because here we have, you may see this picture. Well, what is it? It is the picture of the first garden called the Garden of Eden. And God, when he created the world, he created people and he put the first man and woman in that garden. And the lady in, was called Eve and the man was called Adam. Adam and Eve. 
there were two, what we call two genders, man and woman, male and female. That's how God created us. Now, they were placed in the garden, and you may know the story, how God told them they could eat the fruit of all the trees, which were plentiful and beautiful, but there was a fruit of the tree they were not to eat of, and that was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, as you can see in this picture, Eve was tempted by the snake or the serpent. Now, that represents the evil one who we know as Satan or the devil. Now, he came to tempt Eve to try and get her to do wrong. And he questioned what God had said. He said, did God really say you can't eat the fruit of the trees? And Eve says, well, we can, but we're not to eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because we will die. And the serpent says, no, 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 you won't die. So he made Eve doubt God's word and also God's love, which is what he does to us today. He makes us doubt what God has said and he makes us think that God doesn't really love us. Sadly, as you know, that Eve listened to the serpent. She took the forbidden fruit and then she handed it to Adam. Now, Adam, he realized that Eve had been tricked. He wasn't tricked. But the Bible tells us that Adam loved Eve more than God. He ate of the forbidden fruit and they immediately recognized they had done wrong. What we call their conscience was awakened. When we do wrong, God places within us a conscience to help us to know what's right and wrong according to the laws that he has given to us. We sometimes call those laws the Ten Commandments and it helps us to know what is sin. Now, sin is not doing what God says. So both of them are done wrong. And God came into the garden. He saw what they had done wrong and Adam and Eve, they had put uh, fig leaves around them because they had no clothes. They had no need of clothes initially. And God came looking for them. Now, they first of all hid. But of course, we can't hide from God. And God says, Adam, what have you done? Adam blamed Eve and Eve blamed the serpent. And then God said, because they had done this, that the whole world now had a change. Sin had come into the world, and when sin came into the world, it just causes such devastation. And at the very beginning, that's what's happened. Adam and Eve sinned, and the consequences of that passed on to all mankind. But in there in the garden, when God told that Adam and Eve would now die because of their sin, he also made a promise. And they didn't die immediately, of course, but in the beginning, they, God had provided for them that they could have life and not die. But because they had sinned, then the consequences was that they would die. Now, God then said to the serpent that what they had, what he had done was to try and spoil his creation and to spoil man and women. But God promised that one day someone would come who would defeat the devil and destroy him. And how the serpent would strike this person's head, but you will strike his heel. In other words, there was going to come someone into the world who would set men and women free from their sin and that was the promise and what God had said so that men and women could be delivered and of course God was referring to the time when Jesus was to be born and so let's go now as we move on from there into this wonderful story as you can see there it was so tragic and sad what happened in the Garden of Eden and of course this is not that's made up story. This is true because the Lord Jesus himself refers to the fact of Adam and Eve and how God created men and women. And they were the first men, man and woman. And of course, they brought sin into the world because of their disobedience. They were put out of the Garden of Eden. And then 
a few hundred years later, or a couple of thousand years later, the promise that God had made to Adam and Eve and to all mankind was to be fulfilled. And it started with a man called Zechariah, who he and his wife had no children. And, and Zechariah was going to the temple to meet with God and worship God, as was the custom. Now, while he was there and he was worshiping God, an angel appeared. This angel appeared to Zachariah and said, look, Zachariah, your prayer has been answered. They've been praying for many years for a child. And the angel says, Zachariah, God's heard your prayer. You, wife Elizabeth, will give you a son and you are to name him John. Well, it was quite incredible. But Zachariah, because he knew God's word, he said, well, how can this happen? which really was not believing what the angel or the Lord was saying to him. And he should know better because he knew the story of Abraham and Sarah. He knew how God many times had answered people's prayer, given them children, but he, believed, he didn't believe. And he said, how can this happen? I'm an old man. And my wife is also well along my days. And so because of that disbelief, the angel told him, look, because of your unbelief, you will now be dumb until this happens. And so, um, as you can read the words here, he says, but now since you didn't believe what I said, you'll be silent and unable to speak until the child is born. My words will happen at the proper time. Well, so we hear in the story how Zechariah couldn't uh, couldn't believe, uh, sorry, couldn't speak for that period of time, but his wife did become pregnant. And I'll come, we'll come back to this in a moment. Well, in Jerusalem, there was a, a, a beautiful lady, a young lady called Mary. And Mary had a fiancé called Joseph. Now, Mary was sleeping. And the angel came to Mary and says to Mary, Mary, greetings, the Lord is with you. And then the angel Gabriel told her that uh, don't be afraid, for you found favor with God. You're going to conceive and give birth to a son, and you're going to name him Jesus. He is going to be very great, will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Well, of course, as you can imagine, Mary, she was kind of startled by what the angel was saying and was wondering well, how this is going to happen. And I, I've never known a man. I'm, not, I'm, I'm a virgin. The Lord says to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. The baby will be born holy and he will be called the Son of God. Besides this, your relative Elizabeth, she's also become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but now she's in the sixth month. But nothing is impossible with God. And that's a tremendous words that the Lord spoke to Mary. Nothing is impossible. And that applies to all of us today. So Mary, she says, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you've said about me come true. And then the angel left. And so when that had happened, Mary hurried after this to go and visit her cousin Elizabeth. And she went to their house. We'll see it was a, a journey there. Now, as the angel had told her, Elizabeth was now six months pregnant. But an amazing thing happened. When Elizabeth saw Mary and Mary saw Elizabeth and they greeted each other, Elizabeth said, Oh, my baby, when he met you, jumped 
in the womb. Because the baby, now as you can see, this is a picture of a baby in the womb. And this is maybe a picture when the child would be about six months pregnant. And so Mary says, the baby leaped within me. And Elizabeth, as you can read the words here, was filled with the Holy Spirit, gave a glad cry and explained to Mary that God has blessed you. Or Elizabeth said to Mary, God's blessed you, bold woman. He said, why am I so honored? The mother of my Lord should visit me. Because what was happening was the baby, John, who was now in Elizabeth's womb, had recognized already, just in those few days, the Lord Jesus as a child was already being formed within Mary's womb. And so, of course, they celebrated together. And we know this special uh, rejoicing that Mary prayed and she began to praise the Lord and made this special, sometimes people call this the Magnificat, this worshipping God for what he has done and how God shows mercy to those who fear him. So he made this promise and then Elizabeth, uh, Mary, she went back to uh, Nazareth where, where then the, ba the baby John was born and when they were asking about naming the child, they uh, wanted to call him after Zacharias. But Zacharias, no, it was not in his head. And he asked for a piece of chalk, a tablet to write on. And he said, his name is going to be John. And immediately he wrote the name John, which is what the angel had told uh, Zacharias to call the baby. Then his voice came back and he could speak. And then there's this prayer, I'll not really read it through for you now because of the time. And once he did that, his voice came back and he began to celebrate what God had done. Well, uh, let's just move on because we just want to show you some of the other story because John, um, this is Zacharias prophesying about John and how, what he was going to do and the gifting, the ministry. Well, let's just quickly look now how the angel visited Mary and Joseph. So, of course, Joseph, now when Elizabeth came back, when Mary came back, recognized that she had, was pregnant. And, of course, initially he was very, very disappointed, as you can imagine, because something he never believed seemed to have happened, that Mary had been unfaithful. But then... The Lord spoke to him and told him that the child in Mary's womb was there from the Lord. And so when he was sleeping, the Lord spoke to him. And the angel said, don't be afraid, Joseph, to take Mary as your wife. For the child with her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And you will have, she will have a son and you're to name him Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. And this was according to the promise in the Old Testament. A virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son. They will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And so Joseph did what the Lord had told. And we know and it came time for Mary to be born. And at that time, as you often hear the reading in the church, which will be today, if you're at the church later on, then we read about this, uh, this decree that was made that everyone had to go to the uh, hometown to be registered. Mary and Joseph, they had to go to the hometown to be registered. Well, as they got there, they were finding somewhere to stay. There was no room in the inn, but the innkeeper allowed them to have a place in a manger. And there, as you can see this picture, Mary gave birth to the Lord Jesus Christ. Just an amazing event. One of the greatest events in the whole world. The Lord Jesus, the Son of God, was born in a manger 
in Bethlehem. It was a tremendous time. Well, while that was happening, there were shepherds on a hillside and maybe they were talking about uh, the coming Messiah because the, the people of Israel at that time were longing, longing for a deliverer to set them free from the rule of the Roman Empire, which controlled most of the world and of the known world at that time. And there they were. Then suddenly we read, of course, in the story, in the scripture, the angel, the sky was suddenly filled with angels. And the angel said, an angel said, don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring joy to all the people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. You'll recognize him by this sign. You will find the baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. And then we know, as the Bible tells us, as that happened, the sky was filled with the angels praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven, peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. And of course, the carols, we sing at that, I'm not actually doing that here this morning. Angels, we have heard, and I, and wonderful songs. Our shepherds watched their flocks by night, all seated on the ground. The angel of the Lord came down, and glory shone around. So the angels then told the shepherds to go and to see. And that's what they did. They went down to the inn where the baby Jesus was born. And then they went and gathered around and saw the birth of the baby. And this was what we call the Christ child. And they were, they went and they just so excited, as you can imagine, the telling Mary how the angels had come and told them. And it says, Mary began to think about these things. This was just so wonderful and amazing, the things that were happening. As you can see, they would gather around and give thanks to God and give praise for the fact that the Lord Jesus, and maybe there were other others around there, maybe some children, as you can see, maybe we're looking through. We don't know, the Bible doesn't actually say, but we can imagine, wow, when this event happened, that people would be round about, uh, maybe hearing the noise, hearing the child crying, and uh, yeah. As she said, when she heard all these things, she began to realize that what the angel had said to her was true. He was born the Savior. Now, let's just move on with the next major event. And that was, the Bible tells us that there were shepherds who lived in another country. Uh, sorry, not shepherds, wise men who lived in another country. They, some people think they're as far away as, as Iran or Persia. And these men uh, were people who sought after truth, sought after wisdom, and they became aware of this special star. And as they looked at the star, they knew from the books that there was a prophecy about a, a star appearing, heralding the birth of a great ruler. So they came, these shepherds, and they did the journey all the way as they followed the star, which led all the way to uh, Jerusalem. Well, first of all, over Jerusalem. And then, because they thought, well, this great ruler is going to be born in a palace. And so the natural place to go was to go to the capital, which was Jerusalem. And so they came. And the scripture says they came to Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We have seen his star as it rose and we've come now to worship him. Now, King Herod, who was a very nasty man, was deeply upset when he heard this. And so he called a meeting of the priests and teachers of the Bible. Where is this Messiah supposed to be born? because I will come and worship him. And so 
they consulted the scripture. And do you know when we look at God's word, we begin to discover amazing things, even about what's happening today, even about the return of Jesus, which is what we're all looking for and will come very soon. But they knew from the scripture that Jesus was to be born in Bethlehem in Judea. For that's what the word of God or the prophet has said in the scripture. And so they showed the scripture. And this was the scripture. It's from the Old Testament, a book of Micah, which says, But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth the one who is going to be the ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. And then Herod says, well, go and, and then come and tell me so I can worship him as well. Of course, he was being very disappointed. So, it wasn't a, a long journey from Jerusalem to Bethlehem. And then it stopped over the place where the child was. Now, most people think, of course, that it, uh, he wasn't now a baby. He was up to two years old because we know that because of what happened next. But the, shepherd, the wise men followed the shepherds and they were filled with joy. And the end of the house where the child was, they saw Mary and they worshipped because they recognised this was one of the most special children who had ever been born and they brought these special gifts gold frankincense and myrrh and so they presented these gifts the gold in token of his royalty myrrh because of the sufferings that were to happen and frankincense a recognition of who he is is the token of his divinity and as we can see here in this note Gold symbolizes royalty, reminding us that Jesus is truly the King of kings and Lord of lords. Frankincense was used by the temple priests. And it shows us that the Lord Jesus, who is our priest, who is one who is praying for us even now, carries our prayers to God as our mediator. But myrrh is a fragrant perfume used to embalm dead bodies. But it showed us that the Lord Jesus was destined to die. So even when the child was young, his death, his cruel death on the cross, was being foretold even in those days. And so when it was time to leave, the wise men, they returned to another route because the Lord had told them and shown them and warned them not to go back to Herod, who, of course, was Furious about what had happened. And then, once again, the angel went to Joseph and says, Joseph, quickly, go, flee to Egypt, and then stay there until it's time to return, because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. And we know this is exactly what Herod did. And because it was now up to two years, so Herod ordered that all the two children uh, up to the two years of age were to be killed, which was a terrible thing, and what he did. So we can see here, this we note, he says these wise men were called magi. They were foreigners, yet they paid attention to the word of God. They came from a far country to worship the Messiah. Of course, Jesus is the Messiah paving the way for a Gentile church. The Magi came to show us that Christ came to, for the whole world, not just for a few. The Bible tells us that very famous verse in John 3, 16, that God so loves the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have a lasting life. And when these wise men came, and as we said, they came, probably from where Iran is now, they pointed to Jesus and signaled to people all over the world that this is your king true. And we know in Iran that hundreds of thousands of Iranians 
are embracing faith in Christ, even though it's very difficult for them to worship because of the opposition and persecution that's there. And so Joseph left for Egypt and they stayed there until King Herod died. And then Joseph and Mary, they came back and went to live in Nazareth. As it was being said, this has fulfilled what the prophets had said. He will be a Nazarene. So uh, that is just in putting all that story of Christmas, which is really what we're remembering at this time, putting it all together. So many things happened. The wise men, the shepherds, and of course, there was a couple there who prayed and dedicated Jesus as Simeon and, and uh, celebrating this birth of Jesus. Now, I've got a little chorus here. Some of you may know this. It's a beautiful little song about Christmas. Isn't Christmas till it happens in your heart? Now, many people are celebrating Christmas as we speak. The main day is, of course, tomorrow when everybody opens the presents, opens the gifts. But sadly, sometimes it's forgotten at this point what Christmas is all about. And we celebrate giving gifts. But as we can see here, the most important gift of what Christmas is about is the gift of salvation, which he gives to us because of his death on the cross, because he died and he rose again. Jesus is alive. And as Mickey was saying at the very beginning, he has made a promise to us, to you, that if you open your heart to him, he will forgive you all your sins. He will give to you eternal life as a free gift, nothing that we can ever earn, this most wonderful gift of all. Thanks be to God, the Bible says, for his inexpressible gift. It's just so wonderful that our sins are forgiven, that he gives us eternal life. But we need to turn to Jesus to receive him into our heart. And this is what this little chorus is about. It simply says, Christmas isn't Christmas till it happens in your heart. Somewhere deep inside you is where Christmas really starts. So give your heart to Jesus. You'll discover when you do that it's Christmas, really Christmas for you. Do you want to do it one more time? Christmas isn't Christmas till it happens in your heart. Somewhere deep inside you is where Christmas really starts. So give your heart to Jesus. You'll discover when you do that it's Christmas, really Christmas. For you. And this is what Christmas is all about. Yes, and the background I have today, which is a picture of Edinburgh celebrating the festivities of Christmas. But you can just see here behind me is the emblem of the figure of the cross. It uh, is actually made out of uh, the appearance there on the picture has just come out of. Uh, uh, an actual fun ride, but the symbol is there. And all over, as you look at the churches, we see the symbol of the cross. We see representing what the Lord Jesus has done for us. Christmas is about Jesus. And is about the greatest gift he came to give you and I, a gift of forgiveness, where all of our sins, everything we've done wrong, can be forgiven. And where we can receive from him his forgiveness for whatever we've done wrong. Total forgiveness. Where the past is put behind. 
where the Bible explains that because of Jesus pouring out his blood upon the cross, that precious blood of Jesus cleanses and forgives us for our sin. So as we close today, you'll be getting gifts. But have you received the most precious gift of all? The gift of the Lord Jesus, who by his spirit comes and lives within us. So if you've never done so, if you're young or even if you're old, do you know God's peace? Do you know Jesus is your Lord and Savior? Would you like to know him? Would you like to receive the meaning, the full meaning of Christmas, which is Christ in us, the hope of the glory which is to come? So we're going to close with a prayer. And if you've never done so, I'd like to receive Jesus, or even the today, just to yield yourself afresh to him and ask the Lord Jesus just to fully help you surrender your life. And that his blessing will come upon you in a new way. So let's pray together. And if you'd like to, I'm just going to lead in a prayer. And if you'd like to say this prayer with me, and simply pray and say, Lord Jesus, I ask you today to come and live in my heart. To forgive me my sin. Lord, I welcome you and I thank you that you died on the cross and you rose again and now you're alive and you have, you have made this promise, I will never leave you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. And you may know here in the United Kingdom that a queen, of course, recently died. And she was such an incredible treasure because every Christmas she would do a Christmas message. And one of the most memorable ones that she shared was when she shared about the Christmas carol in the bleak midwinter. And the last verse of that carol says, What can I give him for as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would give. Man. If I was a wise man, I would do my part. But what can I do? Give me my heart. So we prayed. Have you given your heart to Jesus to receive this greatest present? Our queen, our godly queen, she's now in heaven. She's receiving the fruit of her faithfulness over those 70 years that she ruled. We are so grateful for her and her memory. But more than anything else, we are so grateful to the Lord Jesus for what God has done. So do pray. You're going to enjoy your Christmas. Have a great time. And uh, hope you'll be able to meet with family and be with friends. But remember, You'll never be on your own. Because Jesus has said, yes, okay, Mickey, you do it. Do it, Mickey. Go on then. Yes, I, Jesus has said, I will never leave you. So, that's right. I'll never leave you. And that's the wonderful news. Well, time has gone, so we're going to do a little bit more singing. But uh, I hope you've enjoyed or got something out of what we shared today and Pauline's story of the three trees. Good to look at again or you can share this with someone else over this Christmas time. I see how it is where I'm going to be next week. I'm still going to be in America. And if I can, I'll come and we'll have another program to celebrate the end of the year and looking forward to 2024. OK, God bless you. Bye. <laughs>